All right, so Karina is unpacking her her stuff from the cupboard and moving it over here, which is absolutely fine. Yeah, you're playing with Pim in the buggy. You helping? Helping. Oh, you took your hair out. Yeah, I see. So I'm letting her help with that. And then I'm like, all my bags are empty. Look at this. I mean, it has a fish in here. But, see? All the bags we brought down today are now empty. Empty! Empty! And uh, I talked to James. James thinks that what I'm doing is a complete and total waste of time. But, um, see? That those two bags are empty, too. Here's Karina's drawer that she's playing with. Putting all my stuff in my cupboards, the tea cabinet up here, my cups are going to go right here. And then my plates and um, bowls should fit here. Cereal up here. Doors! And doors! Yeah, you put your puzzle pieces in there last time, remember? And then um, this is my baking cabinet and we use a lot of refried beans, so I put the refried beans in here with all the baking stuff. Because James likes some. Um, a lot of um, Mexican dishes, and I ran out of room in the cupboard over Lord. here where I put all my cans. This is right here is empty, these two, because this is where my dishwasher is going to go eventually after we get it. And then here's all my cans. Honestly, we're getting a shed, and I might just move my cans out to the shed because James doesn't want my, my storage of cans in the house, so... There is that. He's like, we're going to throw away all those cans and what you're doing is pointless because I'm going to throw everything that you put in there out. So I'm like, whatever. No, you're not. And then he got really upset because I told him that he wasn't going to just throw everything away. Right now, here's Karina's books that are stacked up. I made her bed and I threw more blankets on there because I had more blankets packed. Just the stuff I brought down the other time. Um, I need to set up her teepee eventually. Her teepee's in here. Baby... This is your bedroom. Mine. Yeah, this is your bedroom. This is yours. Mine. This is your space. Mama's going to make it so nice for you. Mine. Yeah, you're going to have um, your co-sleeper. And you're going to put your bookshelves in the co-sleep. Yeah, we don't need the cold sleeper in the bedroom because she, could, she sleeps in it during the day, not during the night. We're going to put our bed in here. And... My shelves in here, and so maybe we'll just hang them, and maybe we'll just have an extra shelf for uh, the storage unit outside that we're gonna get. You wanna read that book before we go? Oh, yeah, so we're all finished here. This is why I brought down her books and stuff, because she'll play with these oh. and play with her stuff instead of playing with all the rest of it. Words with Bird. You wanna read it? Book with me. me. Baby, you want me to read it to you? Look. Come look with yeah. me. The artist at work. World of art. Come look with me. See, the thing is, though, is that James and I disagree on what junk is. Like, I think that he has a lot of junk, and he's like, oh, it fits into one box. Look at this. Charles Wilson Pale. The artist in his own museum. Look at this. This is beautiful. The Oregon Trail. You see the artwork? What? Words. Very good. It says words with bird. What is this? No. What is it? It says birds like looks for new words in the sky. It's quite fun. What words do you see? No. Butterfly, kite, cloud, rain. Open up the flap. Whoa. Sun. She loves flap books right now. It's awesome. Flap, sun. Yeah. 
Sun. The old violin. Open, Mama. Okay. You got it? Oh, a castle. Sand, sand castle. Fence. Oh, you drew in the book. Dog, grass, snail. Numbers. Two plus two equals four. Four plus one equals five. Moon. Curtains, windows, trains. Can you find the moon? Moon. There's no flap on that one, baby. Flap. Mm-hmm. It's Yeah, so right now James is pretty mad at me again. He was mad at me yesterday, too, but it's okay. Um, he'll get through it. We'll get through it. We're going to get a garage and... Um, anything that we think is garbage inside the house, we could just put outside the house. I want to store, like, all the games and stuff in the garage, because I don't know if they're all going to fit in here or not. That's what I'm trying to do, a little by little move. Uh, George has helped me out on Sunday with his car. Um, we're going to bring down the bookshelves, and honestly, that's probably it, just the bookshelves. I'm planning on getting two bookshelves in here on Sunday, creating just two white ones. I'm going to put them each laying down on the sides. And then I'm going to fix her. I need to go to Lowe's and get um, hanging rods for her room. Or else I need to move them down. I could probably do that. Okay. Right now they're just too close. No, because it's hooked up to up here. See, this needs to go down here. No, it's just the wrong size. And it's, it's just too close. It's just the wrong size. Like, if I could sand this, I guess I could sand it. But I don't know if I want to take the time to sand it. Because I just don't want to do like, the hassle of things on and off of it. I could open this more or something. I don't know. Something needs to change about this. This needs to change a lot, so... I don't know what to do about it yet. All right, Karina, do you want to get out of here, baby? Want to go home? Car ride. Car ride. Uh, no ride. No ride? You want to stay here and read books? Get up and go, Corduroy. You still like that book? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you like that book. Book. So we have so many books. So books. So many books. Electricity. Book. Okay, let's read Get Up and Go, Corduroy. Corduroy. Get up and go, Corduroy. Corduroy loves to get up and go. Look at him water skiing. Now he's ice skating. Don't slip, Corduroy. Marching is fun, too. Potty, potty. So is sliding. Whoosh. Potty, very good. Rowing is good exercise. And so is playing outside with your friends. Corduroy always has the best time with his pals. Collect all five books. Potty time with Elmo. Elmo and friends, see what they're doing. No. no, Mama can't read it to you? Okay, then you read it to Mama. You read. Do, 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 do. Elmo is super Elmo with training pants on. Or underwear. Potty, potty. Potty, She's such a good baby. Potty, potty. Potty, potty. My dad, Yeah. Mama, potty. Okay. It says potty time with Elmo. Come on, get up and go, Corduroy. There you go. Potty time with Elmo. It's potty time. Elmo's doll, baby David, is learning to use the potty just like Elmo. Now, when David has to go, he hurries to the potty. But you have to use the potty, baby. Da oh, do you have to use the potty, baby, David? 
You do? Let's go. When you have to go, Baby Dave just tells a grown-up or a friend, like Elmo, will help you find the nearest potty. If you want, Elmo will read you a story while you use the potty. Oops, maybe you weren't in time. That's okay. We'll just try again next time. Oh, you are in time. Let's go, Baby David. Go! All done. Good job, Baby David. Look, here's the toilet paper. It spins. Next time. Next, it's time to flush. You'll like this part best, Baby David. After Elmer uses the potty, he always flushes. Elmo loves to hear the water whooshing around and around and down. Whoosh! When potty time is over, Elmo shows baby David what to do. Elmo grabs the fishy soap and his hands are sudsy. A fishy shaped soap and gets his hands all sudsy. Do you wash your hands too, baby David? You do? You did? Oh, you are a smart doll. All clean. You pick that book? Mama loves that book. Mama. Now that Elmer is using the potty, he can wear big kid underpants. Remember, when you want, uh, when you went to the store with Papa and picked out Elmer's very Shark. first pair, Baby David likes the ones with the rocket ship. Shark. Elmer's favorite ones. He... Ones have stars on them. Look, Elmo is a big monster now. Okay. Mama, how long will you love me? No. Mama. Never... No. Okay, you read it to Mama then. Oh, you want the Elmo book? Elmo. This is Elmo. And this is baby David. See? What are you doing? Mama, how long will you love me? No more. No more. Okay. No more. Okay. You, you read it to Mama. Oh, oh. Okay. Look. Let's feel your hands. Hey. Yeah, let's see how cold you are. Cool. Your extremities would be cold first. Your extremity are your fingertips and your nose. No. Ears, stuff like that. Toes. Potty time with Elmo. Huh. Elmo. Elmo. Potty time with Elmo. It's potty time. Elmo's doll, baby David, is learning to use the potty. Baby. 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 David. Just like Elmo. Now when baby Elmo. David, Elmo, David has to go, he hurries to the potty. You have to use the potty, baby David. You do. Elmo. Let's go. When you have to go, baby David, just tell a grown-up or a friend like Elmo. We'll help you find the nearest potty. If you want, Elmo will read you a story while you use the potty. Oops, maybe you weren't in time. But it's okay. We'll just try again next time. Oh, you are in time. Then go, baby David, go! Look. All done. Good job, baby David. Look, here's the toilet paper. It spins. Next time... Next, it's time to flush. You'll like this part best, Baby David. Okay. Electricity. The shocking story of electricity. Electricity everywhere. Chapter 1. Switch it on. Electricity is all around us, making all kinds of machines work. But what is it? And where does it come from? Yeah. yeah. 
Electricity coming from the ground. Lightning is the flash of light. Thunder is its sound. Electricity. Okay, whenever wherever you look, you'll see things that run on electricity. 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 Creeping towards the ground. Thunder is a wow. or lightning is the flash of light. Thunder is its sound. Wow. Boosh. Train. Right. Street light. Train. Busy cleaning buggy. The supermarket. Wheelchairs. Automatic doors. Cell phones. Blur- burglar alarms. Hair dryers. Electric shavers. Electric toothbrushes. Computers. Lamps. Televisions. MP3 players. Stereos. Irons. Everything runs on electricity. And billions of people around the world have an electricity wow. supply in their house. Isn't that amazing? Actually, it is amazing. A hundred years ago, no one had electricity. Less than 200 years ago, though, there was no electricity supply at all. And no electric gadgets either. Some people used other things. Now we use seed players. Then we use musical instruments. Now we use light bulbs. Then we use candles. Now we use hair dryers, and some people still use the sun. Now some people use toasters. Then some people used to use fires. Now, some people use computers. Then, some people use advocates. Now, some people use a bread maker. And some people still make bread by hand. Now, some people still use vacuum cleaners. Then, and now, some people still beat the carpets. Um, then and now, we used a fan. Oh, lovely. There has always been electricity in nature. Lightning, for instance, is a great electric spark. Back in prehistoric times, people called, oh, could see how powerful lightning was. Hey, it set fire to that tree. Run for your lives! But they had no idea it was a form of electricity or that electricity could be useful to them. They thought lightning was a punishment sent by their gods. Take that! Help! Chapter 2, The Early Days. That's incredible. In 600 BC, an ancient Greek scientist named Thales made a shock, a surprising discovery. Thales found that he could take a piece of amber and rubbing it with cat fur, the amber would pull things closer to it. It could even pick up white objects such as hairs and seeds. The amber has an invisible pulling force. It's like magic. As soft as a cloudy sky. As slow as a sleepy moon. The Greeks were amazed by the amber's power to pick up the objects. They also found that if they rubbed the amber a lot, they sometimes saw a little spark. Did you see that? (gasps) Hey, it tickles. (gasps) Tickles. Thales and his friends had discovered a kind of electricity, although they didn't realize that. All right, Mama, how long will you love me? Can I say one was up? Lap, lap, lap. So much, you know that. This is gonna be our last book. We have to get home. We have to make proper dinner. Mama, how long will you love me? In a brambly forest, Sammy asked, How long will you be my mother? Always, said Mama. How long is always, Sammy asked. Miles and miles forever, said Mama. No book. No book? Okay, that was our last one. So if you don't let me finish it, we gotta go. Go, we gotta go. Okay, ready to get going then? No book. No? Okay, then let me read the book to you. Book. Book? No, no book. No, no, not that book. Oh, this one's longer. You're trying to stay here longer, huh? Alright. Baby, we gotta go. Oh. Yeah, let's check the time. Hi. Alright, it's 2.30. Of Yeah, it is 2.30 in the afternoon. We are all finished unpacking. Packing. Yeah, we unpacked everything that we wanted to unpack today. Yeah, we did. We did. We unpacked it all. It's all put away. All right.
I know the books are awesome. Want to take that book with you? No. Okay, we'll take the book with us, okay? Yeah. Take as many books as you want home. Home. Yeah, because that's where we're going. We're going home. 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 Home with the book. Let's go home with the book then. Say bye. Home. Say bye. Oh. Say bye. <laughs> Say bye. You don't have to. That's it for our update. This is what we're doing. We put away all this stuff. I brought in all this stuff. I can't believe how Mama much car. Jane, Mama's car is outside. James thinks I'm completely wasting my time, um, but he doesn't understand how much easier the move is going to be if we have a lot of stuff here already and put away and set up. Um, I am going to bring down Mama the dressers, car. Karina's dressers, which are the bookshelves Mama for her car. books and her clothes and stuff like that. Car. And um, I need Mama to change car. out the hanging rod so I can hang stuff up for her so this way um, and I need to get separators. I'm just going to make them out of um, cardboard. So she's going to have like size 6, 7, 5, 4, and 3. Because right now she's in a size 3 clothes. So 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And then I want to get her 8, 9, 10s, and 11s. Um, so this way she'll have clothes for the future as well. I'm big into being prepared for things. If you look at my cupboards, my shelves, the way that I shop, the way that I live, everything is in a preparation for the future and for stuff like that. It's one of the reasons why I bought the house because... Um, I do like to have things prepared and I do like stability and I do like to be secure in what I'm doing and I never want to go through an eviction ever again and if we did get evicted from the, the land we'd still have the house um, so we could just we're planning on buying land anyway I don't think we're gonna get evicted from the land I don't think that um, I picked out a really nice community to live in so it's not going to be going away anytime soon Everything's really picked up. There are some empty spots in the community. There are some empty trailers, but um, it's well maintained. It's old and new, and there are people that have been here for the last 30 years um, that are here, which is pretty awesome. So, like, they've seen all the changes. Like, I was talking to Mrs. Kelly the other day, and she's like, "Oh, this place is awful now. You should saw it when it first opened." And I'm like. This is actually a really nice place, though. So if it was even better back then, and it's pretty good now, I know it's under new management and stuff like that. But it's not doing so like it's not doing too bad at all. So, but um, we are gonna end up leaving here three years max because um, the lot rent goes up every year here. And if you're on a lot that you don't own and the rent goes up every year, there's no point in staying. So we gotta move this to a more permanent situation. Shoes. And then in another Mama, three years after that, we should be completely debt-free and living like we've never lived before. We should be able to go on vacation. We should be able to take care of our child. We should, like, completely take care of our child with everything and anything that she'd ever want or need. Like, I don't want to give her everything that she wants. Obviously, I don't want to be spoiled. But And it's right now only in the plans and only in the making. It doesn't mean it's going to happen in six years. But I think, I think we could, um, I think we got this. I think we could do this, so... That's it. And, and our plans would fall through completely if something ever happened to the house. So, you know, so it's all just, like it's all contingent on things working out properly and us playing our cards right. So and I tend to play my cards right in preparation for things. So our next big thing is the shed, shed, dishwasher and, and um, sink sprayer. So next three things that I want. We got to get out of here, though, because I have to go home and make dinner for James this way. He'll be happy when he gets home. I'm hoping to just have him be happy. So, And maybe one day he'll understand why I moved this way and why I prepared this way and why I do things this way. Because when he does help move, like last move, it was really, really awful. Um, Karina was only three months old, and it was an awful move for me, and it was an awful move for him, and he was sore for a week, and I was... That's not Papa, baby. That's just some man. Papa's a man, too, but that's not Papa. She always does this. She's like, Papa. Like, she used to look at Dominic, our old neighbor, Papa. and go, Papa. And he wouldn't, he doesn't acknowledge Papa. her because it's not his. But, like, she's, Papa. he's like, Papa, Papa. And she'd get really offended when he wouldn't turn around and, like, acknowledge Papa. her. I'm like, honey, that's not Papa. Papa's at work. Papa is at work, baby. So, yeah, but I'm trying to get freedom, stability, and really, really a good environment for my daughter. Grass. There's grass outside. Grass. So just like I want my own hens. I want my own goats. I want my own garden. I want to be pretty much completely off the grid. You know, I want solar powered everything. 
and we could still have Verizon for James and the phones and stuff and just simple, simple, stable, happy, you know, simple, stable, happy. If he could stay home five months out of the year and not have to work and we could go on vacations during that five months, how awesome would that be? If we could have another baby in five years and be able to actually like afford the baby, how awesome would that be? Like I could afford Karina, but it's because I'm so cheap. <laughs> so, all right, that's it for update. This is what we're doing. We got to go home. All right, home, bye. Bye.